Hello everybody and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch, I'm Eddie the Chump and today I've actually got Frido with me because we're going to be going over Sombra and the buffs that we think uh, she needs to be a useful hero within Overwatch. Uh, the first part of the discussion we're going to talk about everything that we think is good about her and then we're going to move on to some of the pressing issues. So do you want to say hi to everybody Frido? Hi everybody Frido. So I like Sombra a lot and we really wanted her to redefined the game in some ways and I think she's so close to getting there with a few changes but first of all I want to praise the good things that they brought to the game with Sombra I think the number one thing is that she's finally out so that's a big relief isn't it but that's a bonus yeah, yeah. her being out is definitely a bonus it definitely helps right the character design of her is beautiful it's it's an all together idea where she just fits right into the universe and Playing her, you feel like the character that you're supposed to be. And, and every Overwatch character, that's very important to me, and I think a lot of our fans as well, based on previous videos I've made on the subject, I think we're all in agreement about that. So, what she does for the game, I think we're all on board for. Now, we want to sort of gear that towards it being viable in the game, but that's a, a different discussion. So, um, as well, I think it was a bit of a risk for Blizzard to even toy with some of these concepts because it can be difficult to add in things that mess with other people's fun and that's what Sombra does ideally. Um, so I think yeah, the, the good news is yeah. she's not broken from launch. Yeah, the idea of having like a null or silence type hero uh, in a game that does essentially, just that's a very good way of describing it, stop other people having fun. Um, could be intensely frustrating. I know a lot of the community was uh, really um, skeptical about having invisibility in the game. References to the spy from Team Fortress 2 and how irritating it is to die to that character and all that kind of stuff. Thankfully, they've avoided some of that. But I really feel like they just, this is just my opinion. I really feel like they couched their bets with her. I think they pulled punches. Um, and you can tell by the way that she plays. I think that her, the way her abilities are designed and how they tie in with her lore is amazing. And they did a really good job in the short infiltration um, animation of showing those abilities off in, in, in the world, right? They grounded it in that world that we know to exist already with characters like Reaper and Zaya and Widow. And they definitely feel like that, but they don't work as well as I thought they were going to. It's as if they, they saw the feedback that everyone was giving about the TF2 spy, and they kept all that lethality that the spy had, which I do agree I, is not too fun. You know, I've played TF2 not a ton, but enough to know that he can, obvious, he can be in your formation and you don't know about it. He can be behind you and then insta-kill you. Sombra can't do any of that, right? She, and she's a muted version of that infiltration playstyle. But I think to the detriment of what she can bring to the table. Now, but the best thing that she already has in her kit is what we deem the best ultimate in the game. I think hands down, um, indisputably, a team fight winner. You could pop it and and just do so much for your, for your team and feel really good about it. Yeah, so what's great about it is... Um... First of all, a little qualification. Obviously, she's only available in the PTR at the moment. She hasn't dropped to live. And in the PTR, there is already an ultimate charge rate nerf for all characters, as well as some specific ones like Ana and Mei. So in a game where there are less ultimates in general, and there's less um, these, these sort of big... We're going to use three ults to try and wipe you, but you've got a Zen ult and then you're going to counter ult and all this kind of stuff. In that environment, Sombra is lethal, right? Um, but now she serves more as a, as sort of a, we're going to talk about this later, but as a win more character. So she, if you have an alt stack, say if you have a Graviton and um, you have Synergy, you're playing with friends or whatever, and you call it and you EMP and then Graviton, there's nothing they can do about that. There's no Zen ult, there's no nothing. And that's why it's so powerful. Having said that, in an environment where ultimates ultimately mean less, if, if you pardon my uh, poor English there, um, I don't know how she's going to settle. I do think it's one of the best ultimates in the game, if not the best, but... Um, well, she basically removes an ult fight away from the enemy team, yeah. which they only had, you know, a quarter less than normal anyway. 
So in that way, yeah, her, I think her ultimate is, is devastating. But because we have issues with her kit, the way that I've attempted to theorycraft around her has caused her to basically be the detriment to the team in the same way that you have to prop up a Symmetra. Because you have to prop her up in so many different ways, right, to just justify that pick, just to get this really cool ultimate off without your team being so flimsy and losing entirely. That's how she feels to me in many ways. And mainly, the squad comp that I developed was so that you could try to deal damage from different sources at different angles to try to set her up to get something injured so that she could go capitalize. Because if you're in a standard 2-2-2 poke battle, oftentimes things just won't get injured quickly enough and she'll spend most of the game waiting for that opportunity. People are calling her opportunist and I think in some ways that is a fancy way to say she baits and waits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. I suppose we're going to move on to what we think are the main criticisms of her. And in my opinion, she cannot be played as a DPS, right? She's in the attacking category. She cannot be played in a 2-2-2 standard like that because she simply doesn't have the tools to carry. Um, uh, she is an opportunist and the, the way Frido tried to theorycraft was that traditionally with a death ball or a dive comp, they're, they're two different methodologies of doing essentially the same thing, which is fighting all together to be more uh, offensively efficient or defensively efficient, whatever. So you're engaging as a group and, you're ha and you're t the point is to have as many 6v6 even fights or fights it, you know, where you're numerically in advantage as possible to win the game. Well, th this is how I would describe it, right? So two areas of the fight. If she was in the back line or in the death ball herself, I don't think she's that good at either. In the death ball because her range damage is so bad that any other character will be better there. She, her damage is similar to Tracer's in that way, except Tracer's is even better. And you wouldn't want to play Tracer in a death ball for good reason. So, with that being the case, you want to go in the back line, but due to the rest of her abilities working the way they do, it doesn't end up panning out well for her. Hack aside, it's just, hack is a separate thing, we'll value that in a moment, but the invis takes a full second to cast, and then they can potentially spray and pray for the next second while they guess where you are to make you go on viz and you're instantly dead then your translocator is far worse than tracers blink and recall because more than likely you're you have to set it up to go somewhere way off in the distance or uh to a spot that's not as advantageous and in your control right because it's hard to say what's going to happen in the next few seconds and for all you know somebody's camping that thing anyway whereas the tracer blinks can go exactly where you want with this being the case she kind of awkwardly fits into the engagement to the point where she should be in the back line but not be trying to take duels by herself waiting for the enemy team to be lit and trying to run then she can pounce when they're on the back foot that's where she excels and that's why i call her a win more character because as soon as they're on the back foot then yeah you have all the options to you you can hack this you can finish this off you can do whatever but that requires the rest of your team to be winning the mid-fight until you get to that point. And the only way I could think to set that up is to take multiple angles of approach, have s characters that can self-sufficiently spread the map, and to be honest, that's far less characters than I think I, I realized. I think it has to be far Pharmacy to the side, Widow in the back, Sombra in the back line of the enemy team, and you take this three-pronged angle approach, and even when you set up all these things in the most perfect scenario, it still feels less viable than just playing normally. Um, so sorry, I went on a massive rant there. It feels, yeah, I mean, if you're, t if you're talking about harassing back lines, then, I mean, this is one of the characters that I, th I think really devastates a Sombra. Even attempting to do that is, you would take Genji Winston, maybe. Is she favored in one duel? 1v1. I don't think so. I don't think she's even favored. Here's, here's the thing. I don't think she's favored versus Zen, who she should. In the design of her character, Zen is a great example of a support that's slow, that's quite reliant on, on his abilities, all that kind of stuff, that she should absolutely eliminate. But every time a Sombra has hacked me and challenged me from the back line, it, she's two headshots away and she has no footsie tools at that point that's the thing and tracer who does have those tools 
can get wrecked by Zen. She better be afraid. She's only moves, moving at horizontal plane. So if Zen's aim is on point, think, think. Yeah, and it's over. I mean, that's happened to you as Tracer and playing as Zen, I know for sure. But both sides of the coin, that Tracer losing that battle. So you're asking Sombra to do that same job with no mobility whatsoever and an invis and a that box. doesn't really work in the middle, right, in the middle of the fight. Yeah. Uh, it, correct. And, and she's easier to hit, le less footsie tools, all this. So... Where should she play? She has to get really close to deal Tracer-like damage, but then once she gets there, she's like a, a, a dog that finally caught up to that car he was chasing. What do I do with it? I don't know. There's there's nothing there's nothing you can do once you get in that spot. You have to hope that it's lit and it dies instantly. Then you sneak away without anybody noticing, which doesn't happen in organized play. And once the team knows the Sombra's in the back line, free kill for you. Exactly, especially if you're running a Winston, right? So if you, if you are playing Winston, and there's a Sombra diving your back line, his jump is a, has a five second cooldown. That's faster than any of her cooldowns, right? Six, but yeah. Oh, is it six? I thought his was five. Yeah, so I'm a Winston main. Five is D.Va, but yeah, okay. either way. All right, so it's the same. It's the same as uh, her invis or, or translocator. But he knocks her out of it, right? And it's yeah. a big splash and damage, and so his if he lands it on her, she's just like, I, please try and use invisibility, please. You know, please come near my supports. I think she she has a very cool design and idea of what she should be doing in the game, but I don't think that her tools are good enough to perform that design. That's the that's the core of it. I think that the and that's why I say I think Blizzard pulled some punches because traditionally, let's be honest. In all other games, when a new hero comes out, generally there's a bit of tweaking and they come out a bit too powerful because internal testing is never the same as putting it amongst general population, etc. But I actually think that Sombra's come out weaker than people anticipated. And, and that's for good reason, because I do think she's weaker than she should be. Actually, I think we, we I want to finish one point on Invis, then we'll we'll sum up hack and then we'll go on to our fixes. We don't mean to be beating the poor horse that is his character, but uh, we, we you know, there's a lot of things to discuss. I think I, I was surprised actually that the community didn't like Invis because so many other heroes abilities to just get to the back line anyway are so much stronger and can be used in battle. So I don't really understand why anyone dislikes and viz where it is now you physically can't use it to get away a as it stands unless the enemy team messes up badly whereas tracer's blink you can deal do nothing about and genji's swift strike he's going right through you <laughs> like it's gonna happen and he gets damage for it and he gets this big movement burst so i'm a little confused on that response but i think the more you play sombra the more you probably realize how the invis is a tech ability that you can use in some small situations and um, that might be an area we look to buffer now hacking here's the problem with hacking right it doesn't set her up to do much mccree's stun sets him up to kill that thing in front of him which is a huge deal whereas hack has such a niche applicability it might let's say you hack a May in the back line, so now she can't wall off and your team can come through. Okay, that's that's interesting. But oh, if you give him the Reinhardt, that's amazing too. Drop the Rhine Shield. However, it takes that full second to cast, and in that time, you can get shot, interrupted, and then if you don't have Translocator up, you're dead anyway. You can't you can't go invis and run away, and you have to run away. Now the team knows you're behind them. And how many times do you think you're going to get away with just getting behind the team and getting no value? What character really can justify doing that? None, really. And in that full second anyway, the character you're trying to hack likely can turn around and use an ability on you before hack's done. It's happened to me so many times. Like, good characters realize they're getting hacked, turn around, even if you're hacking a Rhine, what, maybe he pops the charge, maybe he fire strikes you, gets you to half health. What are you going to do then? Yeah, it's, it's essentially... The idea is good. The idea of being able to tactically disable something that's carrying or something that's necessary to the other team, right? So you're playing a death ball style. The idea is, well, it would be great if there was a character that could sneak up on their Rhine and suddenly they have no shield and team synergy, you follow up with your team, it's all arranged and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it just doesn't work out like that. And actually one of the misconceptions about hack is that there's loads of good hack targets. Health packs, 
McCree, <laughs> you know, well, what I consider extremely low value hack targets. Anyway, in the first place, before we even get to the the reality of leveraging it in a game where it takes a second to cast and could be disrupted by the, you know, one tracer bullet from across the map. Like, the, aside from that, I don't think it's that powerful an ability, actually. It's powerful on very specific targets. May, Roadhog, Reinhardt, any, but any, like, any character that is useful in their primary fire or alternate fire is is a poor target so mccree is probably the worst target for her right if you really think about it mccree can't flashbang or roll he can still headshot you twice he can still find the hammer you're not taking that much away from him and because it's so hard for her to leverage that hack in reality to be able to get away with it is it worth a risk is it should you not just be doing damage at that point? And that's the problem, is that hacking should be something you look to do. But in most, um, in most scenarios, it's better just to be doing the damage. And if, you're, if that's true, then isn't it better to be a hero with better tools to stay alive in the backline, like Tracer? And yeah. better damage. Better damage, better footsie tools, better everything for that role, right? So that's the problem, is that hack is too easy to disrupt. A lot of the time, it's not the advisable course of action anyway. And to, to make that the case, you'd have to improve it, um, make it easier for her to, uh, we'll go into our solutions. We'll go into buffs in a second. I got one more, thi one more thing to say on this too. I think something that we may have realized, I, I may have realized in seeing how Sombra plays out is remembering that Overwatch is a shooter game first. In MOBA games, if you had a single target hack from a decent distance away, that's absolutely amazing because basic attacks in MOBA games, typically on a lot of characters, are worthless compared to their ability skill set. And they typically have like four to six or whatever. It depends on the game you're playing, right? They have a lot of abilities. Whereas in the shooter game, you hack Mei, okay, fine. She can't stall out. She can't wall your team. But her weapon's still good, right? She hits you with that freeze ray, you're done, son. Her right click, it does as much damage as McCree, just a little bit less damage per second, but it's still sick. People's weapons, all the heroes' weapons, really, are decent enough to warrant them saying, well, I'll just shoot now till that's done. And by the way, cooldowns exist. So if a hero uses an ability, and then it's on cooldown, you go in to hack them, well, you just wasted that opportunity to shoot them, because they were going to get that ability back anyway as silly as that sounds. So it's like, the enemy team already has the hack effect when they use an ability that doesn't get as much value, and you can win the value game that way. So you're not actually robbing them of uh, value at that point in time, which is kind of goofy to say. Now, um, I think maybe then, with all this railing against poor Sombra, I think we can move on to, to uh, Solutions that we have for her. It's 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 just to be clear. It's not railing against the character It like on a conceptual level. I actually think conceptually she's very interesting And I think that there's definitely a place for a hero for a null slash silence hero in the game um, I just I think that the way that they've done it it they've made her uh, an anemic version of what she should be. That That's what I believe. Yeah, I tend to agree. I, I love the character and I want her to be good. Yeah. I, I, we, you know, we just don't think she's that good. So I think the best course of action is to choose what we want Sombra to excel at, whether that's being a, a bit better at reliable damage, a bit better in the enemy backline, or hack value. I think we should choose one of those three areas and then try to buff that first, isolated, and see what happens. Eddie had a good opinion on the hack thing, and I think that's sort of what her character is, generally speaking. And the Blizzard might be a little bit afraid to make it too good to start off with, but where do we want to go with the hack? Ed? Okay, so the idea that the first change that I'd like to see, just to, I mean, she's in the PTR, so this is the, the safe space that we can do this in, is I would like her to be able to hack through taking damage. I think that it's really interesting for her to be like, it doesn't matter that you're shooting me if I'm getting behind your Ryan and hacking him 
and then I can translocate backwards because then it's a gambit, right, on her part. There's potential reward, risk, and recovery available. So she can do a dangerous play, she can make a play, right? Um, she can attempt to make a play, take damage, almost die, hack the Rhine Shield, and then teleport back to a health pack on her side that she can then regenerate her health or back to a healer, whatever, and, um, and then rejoin the fight as your team follow up. So being able to hack through damage is the first thing that I'd like to see um, actually changed. And you've got some other ideas about how hacks should be changed. So why don't you tell the... Yeah, I, t I tend to agree with you. And, and to break down why I think that solution works is, as we said before, there's not always a good hack target. Even if you win that hack battle, does it really give you value? And I think what, as you described, that would, in the, all those situations where you get in and you couldn't really deal damage anyway, it would guarantee her playstyle to be viable somewhat. Now, maybe they tried it internally and they're like, well, it's not very fun for the enemy team's Rhine to never have his shield, and that's what they went with. But the problem is, you're going to have to have some annoying interactions with Sombra based upon what she does alone. Okay, so if it if it doesn't feel a little upsetting for the enemy team, then where where's the value going to be? Now, with that being the case, I almost would be fine, and this maybe if the first, but I think that's the first buff they should do. And if that's not enough, maybe try having a bit of a cleave effect onto maybe two or three targets, because in reality, trying to pick point pinpoint the right one at the right time, and if he doesn't have cooldowns available anyway, the value might not even be there. The six seconds is a pretty short window, so if she hit multiple characters with it, I still think that wouldn't even be crazy, because you have to remember too, this is a full second of time that she has to hack where she's not dealing any damage so i want to see that manifest into something that works um i want to try the first thing first thing first i though, think i think that's the simplest I, I think with, with all these considered then she would feel like she's actually the hacker for the team not the bad tracer yeah, that, of the that's team. the problem is uh, if she could hack through damage like i say it would enable her to make plays right currently right now um there's quite a lot of heroes where you have to uh, display Patience and actually not doing something until the right time is the best play. Now, Sombra, to me, feels like all waiting and no value, right? Because you can attempt to make a play now and someone can just hit you once and that's it. That play, that potential value is completely gone. So, and she's one of your six and she's a damage hero, you know. Supposedly, Supposedly, right? So you're giving up a Tracer or a Genji or a Reaper or a McCree or even now a Soldier to do that. And she, she's, in her current state, she's not suitable for that. So that's the first change I want to see is her hack made better. I think no matter what, that hack's got to change somehow because no other buff would make her feel proper because if they change something else that make her better, then she's just still doing that role. So the other buffs we have, I think, might be added on to that, and they're secondary in importance. But, for instance, if we want her to be able to keep her weapon the way it is, she has to be better at keeping herself alive in the back line. And with that being the case, I think the invis cast time should speed up dramatically because you have that full second of prediction time once... Sombra even gets invis off that they can hit her once and be revealed and then pretty much screwed. So if we, instead of two full seconds, one second cast time, one second of guesswork from the enemy team, if that was like narrowed down to one, I could see her duck behind a corner, get invis off and pull more tricks out of her sleeve. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's the best change, but if they want to keep the weapon the same, that might be the way they go. And we talked about the weapon extensively. I even did a little bit of a math project behind the scenes. but Yeah, yeah, um, we believe that... Do you want um, to talk about the weapon, Ed? I, personally, I really like this idea. The idea is that you change her auto pistol from fully auto large spread to uh, a burst pistol. So, like a Rafika from COD or something like that. So, you know, like a, a three or four round burst pistol. And... That way, her damage is more controllable and therefore more efficient because her damage is already less than 50% less than Tracer's. So, if you're going to have that 
low damage scaling, then I think you should be rewarded for hitting in the head successfully um, and conserving your ammo before reloading and all that kind of thing. Just make a weapon slightly more efficient. So that, that I really like that idea. I can see that being very mechanically fun to play. It's not very fun to have a weapon that it's essentially is a really weak fan the hammer with 60 bullets, right? That's not that fun. But what might be fun is getting into the lore of the character, sneaking behind people and doing this slightly more difficult but much more controllable and rewarding firing style. And I like that idea. What do you think? I'm glad you mentioned it being more difficult and that's one downside to this. But I do have a few arguments why the burst SMG would be good. First of all, lore concerns, which sometimes we actually neglect, I think, on this channel, but for this character, I think it's especially strong of an argument. I think a spray and pray SMG doesn't really fit the hacker playstyle as much as a burst one does because she's a character that controls things carefully. She's not this like run and go, she's not a heavy from TF2, you know? And that's the way yeah, her, yeah. her weapon feels, where it's just like, I hope I'm hitting this thing over here. It's, it's, it's not the way I want it to play, right? So just on that point alone. Now, the gameplay side of things, it would help her be tactful, tactical is what I mean to say, in whichever area of the map we want her to be in. And I don't, I'm not too bothered on which that is, whether it's sort of off to the side or does she definitely want to be harassing the back line? Should she be in the death ball? I don't really know right now because her weapon is only good if it's right in the face of something in a duel that she can't win anyway. So with that being the case, I'd like to see it balanced in such a way where you can control, let's say, in a four round burst, the first two shots and then the next two are, they, they, get sporadic and maybe you can spam it but if you spam it too much the spread starts to go out so I'd like to see it built in such a way where there's a risk reward management style to bursting it maybe this is like the CSGO player in my heart like coming out bursting through the screen right now but I would like to see some uh, careful shooting mechanics now the downside of that is it is more complicated and difficult so Blizzard might not go for it just based on that alone but the benefit of what it would do is that she wouldn't be a great DPS still because other characters will be more reliable, easier to use, and et cetera, et cetera. But it would give her damage more focused purpose. Whereas right now, she physically shouldn't be in a fight at two full HP targets, as far as I'm concerned, because she's just bound to lose it. Unless the only way you win it is if the enemy messes up too much, because Let's face it, you're Sombra, you're not doing any fancy footsie stuff, you're just sort of circle strafing, shooting a whole clip into them. They should have the tools to win that as far as I'm concerned. But if you get invis and behind them, maybe you're at close range, it'll feel a little bit like a Genji alternate fire, which is something I love in the game, really getting up close and then shurikening something to the face. It would feel a little bit like that where you have to go like ba -da -da, ba -da -da, to the head and be very controlled. Now, I think... Damage numbers wise, it it if you get lucky and all the shots hit or you're close enough, it can be similar to the kill time of McCree, which is 70 damage per shot, two shots per second, and maybe if you scale the burst to be more equivalent to that, so that if you hit headshots at close range, you can melt stuff, but at the same time, you actually can hit a target at range. Oh my goodness! Like right yeah, now, outrageous. the SMG is like. If they're at medium range, you're just you're just you're doing less damage than Tracer with more bullets, and it feels terrible to do. You're like Diva at range right now with Sombra, and it's a waste of your time to shoot. Whereas if you bursted, your spread would be enough where you're not hitting all your shots, but at least you can get an impactful bit of damage on the head somewhere at range to hopefully deal something. That's what I'd like to see. I think it would help her yeah. at both stages of the engagements where she wants to be, which should be still close, but even at medium range, she can just deal a little bit of helpful poke damage. Because honestly, right now, as far as DPS is concerned, I'd rather be playing Lucio because I can hit Lucio's shots at range and get headshots, and and the, it, it feels more reliable than Sombra at range. It's it's true, and also if you if you did if you uh, remodeled how she did damage and her uh, her whole damage process, you would make her more viable in a two 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 standard um, kind of setup and. I, going back to what we said earlier is that we, we, we really like the character and the design and the philosophy and, and 
the concept of her, but you cannot play her without baiting, and that's the CSGO form of baiting, not um, not the bait with punish fighting game term or from other games. Um, so the negative kind of baiting. So you cannot play her without um, putting your en- your team in a worse position just to exploit your strengths. That 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 is. Not and baiting can be good. Moment. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but baiting can be good, right? If done right, baiting wins an engagement because true. And in CS, people bait people for a purpose. You know, yes, obviously, it, yeah, when it's done right. But I think the value's got to be there in that bait play. Is the point? And if it's not there, then you're just like losing the. You're throwing the game basically. Yeah, you're you're making your team play five v six with no eventual payoff. Um, I just like to talk about her EMP f- quickly. Um, this is obviously a balancing thing that they decided to do, that it only affects people within line of sight, but it's an EMP. So it shouldn't be limited to line of sight. I mean, I know I'm this, I sound like the guy who says, well, lightsabers technically would go on for an infinite length. No, I'm not being that guy and being like, this is unrealistic. I'm, you sound like him though. Yeah, I sound like him. <laughs> <laughs> but but in truth, I think that it should go through walls. It should go through everything. Doesn't require line of sight. And we think of that insane play, right? I mean, the the thing is, right? Graviton affects you through walls, right? As far as I remember, and if you're around the wall, it'll pull you into it. Right? Yeah. Okay. There is some cheeky ways to utilize that, but I don't think it breaks the game. And I think the ways in which you can get creative to use it through walls is a fun aspect of the game. In that same way, if they're holding top right point B on Hanamura on the high ground, and you like Hanzo recon arrow to see they're all there, and then Sombra jumps up next to the wall where they can't see and EMPs them all, and then the Rhine Shield's down and you can just go in. Like, that's a sick play that I'd like to see happen. Whereas right now, remember that character that dies instantly to everything? Oh yeah, she has to be in the middle of everybody. Uh, <laughs> she has in, to be in, relative in sight range. of everyone. Yeah, she has to be in relative yeah. close range because the range is like the old male, it feels like. I haven't actually tested this, but the range is not anything to write home about, I think. You have to, you should more or less be in the center of everybody um, in order to, to get it off. So that range is fine, but if it was if it was three-dimensional, it it's a little more than Zenult, I think, but... If it was three dimensional, it'd be a lot easier to do. Yeah, I just, I, I, I just think she, you know, in closing, I think, I think she's a wonderfully designed character visually. I think they did a great job conceptually. I, I like the idea of her as a hero being viable. And when we make these kinds of videos, it's not because we're like, oh, she's rubbish, or we, you know, we're being negative. It, it, I really think she needs some help to be the character that she should be. And that I want her to be, you know? I want there to be different ways to play the game and to, for people to be able to play a sneaky, stealthy style, you know? It's something that I might be interested in playing myself. So, I mean, I love her, but she I think she needs help. Anything you want to say to close up, Frida? But a lot of people, they suggest to me that if they've seen different players get use out of her and you know you're wrong Frito because I've seen this player do well with her always remember what options you could have had at your disposal so if you see like a pro with sick aim kill things with Sombra what would have they have done with Tracer and then we get a response too, like well why do you always have to compare the heroes because they're competing for spots all the time especially as from the damage role damage role is the hardest thing <laughs> And from the player's perspective, too, you want to make sure the player can even handle that role. But from the damage role, you have to get output, right? You have to. It's not like... It's worse than Symmetra in some ways. Because Symmetra, you know, is just going to sort of camp around, hold a little spot, put up some turrets. Like, there's guaranteed value on the map there. The enemy team has to respect. Whereas, if you put her in the 2-2-2 with with Sombra's DPS, the whole team's, like, waiting for something to get damaged. It's like picking a Widow who's missing shots constantly. You know how that feels? We're, we're, it's worse than picking a widow. Because they don't it's even have to respect you. Wi- I was just about to make this point. Yeah. I was just about to make this point. It, in a game where a character capable of one-shotting most heroes isn't really viable, why make a damage hero that doesn't do any? So with that being the case, the hacking stuff needs to needs to get C value. So Make hacking great again! 2016. 
Well, guys, that's it for this Dualcom. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. It really does help us out. You can check us out on Twitch live stream where we stream each and every day. On these weekends, we tend to stream even longer, so come check us out. We're probably live now. Check out our Discord linked in the description. You can use it to find teammates to pair up with on every platform at every rank. Follow us on Twitter at YourOverwatchYT for stream announcements, updates, and other interesting doodads. If you haven't subscribed already, you should. We upload each and every day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. That's been it for Frito and Eddie. We'll see you guys next time.